Freddy vs. Jason is a 2003 American crossover slasher film <clears throat> directed by Ronnie Yu and written by Damian Shannon and Mark Swift. The film is a crossover between A Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th series and pits Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees against each other in the 8th and 11th installments in their respective series. The film is also the last in both Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th series before they were both rebooted. <coughs> yeah, so here's the trailer of, I mean, here's the, the flyer of Freddy vs. Jason, I think. Oh, yeah, the theatrical release poster. Well, I gotta admit... That movie of this movie was really badass. Yeah, I really like to see people getting sliced and diced until Freddy and Jason decided to fuck each other up. Yeah, with the claws and knife, I mean machete. So Freddy Krueger is in hell, literally, and like on. An inmate with a life sentence, Freddy's been plotting a fantastic revenge. And all he needs is a little help. In comes Jason Voorhees, the equally iconic madman and perfect means for Freddy to once again install a fear on Elm Street. As the bodies begin to pile it up, it becomes clear that Jason isn't willing to step aside. Now, with a terrified town in the middle, the two titans of terror enter into a horrifying and gruesome showdown. Winner kills all. The ultimate battle of evil versus evil. Damn, that's a good... That's a good plot. That was the greatest plot I've ever read on the back cover of Freddy vs. Jason from New Line Cinema. Freddy Krueger is rendered powerless in hell because of the people in Springwood to forget about him. Disguised as Pamela Voorhees, Freddy p manipulates Jason Voorhees into killing Springwood teenagers to remain st regain strength. In Springwood, Laurie Campbell, no, not Laurie from Final Destination 4, lives with her widowed father with... With friends Kia, Gib, Trey, and Blake staying over that night, Jason kills Trey and the police suspect Freddy. Following nightmare, Blake awakens to find his father beheaded before Jason kills Blake. The next day, the police claim it to be a murder suicide, hoping to contain Freddy. Lori's ex boyfriend Will Rollins and, f and friend Mark Davis are patients at Western Hills. Psychiatric hospital. They take hypnosil to suppress their dreams because they previously had t contact with Freddy. A news report leads to Mark and Will to escape and return to Springwood to tell Lori about Freddy. That night, Lori and the others attend a rave at the cornfield. Freddy tries to kill Gib in the nightmare, but Jason kills her in the real world along with several other att attendees, which causes Freddy to realize that Jason's rampage will deny him victims. Linderman and Fred Freeberg escape to rave along with Will, Laurie, and Kia. Laurie and Will go to Mark's house, only to discover Freddy's killing Mark. Deputy Stubbs approaches Laurie and her friends who realize Freddy's plan, learning of Hibnasil. They attempt to steal it from Western Weston Hills, but Freddy possesses Freeburg who disposes of the medicine. After electrocuting Stubbs to death, Jason is tranquilized by a possessed Freeburg, who Jason kills before falling asleep. The teens devise a plan to pull Freddy from the dream world into reality and force him to fight Jason. They take the unconscious Jason to the now-abandoned Camp Crystal Lake, 
Meanwhile, Freddy battles Jason in the dream world, where Freddy has the advantage with his dream powers. He learns that Jason is afraid of water because of his drowning death. Freddy uses water to render Jason powerless, but Lori goes to sleep and tries to save Jason. Freddy attacks her and reveals himself as her mother's killer. Jason awakens at Camp Crystal Lake and chases the teens into a cabin. Linderman is killed with, and the cabin ignites. Lori is awakened and pulls Freddy into the real world where he confirmed, confronted by Jason. As Jason and Freddy fight, the remaining teens escape the cabin. Kia distracts Freddy until Jason suddenly kills her. Freddy uses his speed intellect while Jason uses his strength and tolerance. On the dock, Jason tears Freddy's claw armed off after Freddy stabs Jason's eyes. Lori and Will pour gasoline on the dock and set it on fire, causing propane tanks to explode, throwing Freddy and Jason into the lake. Freddy climbs out and attempts to kill Lori and Will, but is impaled by Jason with his own clawed arm, which allows Lori to decapitate Freddy as Jason falls lifeless into the lake. Lori and Will leave Camp Crystal Lake. The next day, the next day, Jason emerges from the water holding his machete and Freddy's severed head as Freddy winks to the audience before laughing off screen. God damn! That, that's just really weird at the end. Freddy winking at the audience at the end of the movie. Uh, I don't even like it or hate it, but in my opinion, on this ending, it's weird as fuck. So, and the soundtrack, yeah, I gotta love the soundtrack because it was released by Rogue Runner Records over, yeah, 78 minutes of continuous, continuous Various metal head banging thrashing mad house soundtrack album. Yeah, this this soundtrack was released by August 12th, 2003. All the genres all the genres of metal have were mentioned there. Except one of them, which is glam metal and and whatever it is. The producer is Michelle Van Arendonk. And also, the special features on Disc 1 just had widescreen and full screen versions of the film. Commentary by director Ronnie Yu, Robert England, and Ken Kierzinger. Jump to a death menu option. And Disc 2, there's more with deleted and alternative scenes including the original opening and ending with a filmmaker commentary behind the scenes coverage of the film's development including screenwriting set design makeup stunts and principal photography visual effects exploration storyboards and galleries original theatrical trailer and tv spots music video il nino how can i live and much more Oh yeah, especially these two um, trailers that are that are released in the past. Whereas Jason Goes to Hell, which is uh, which is released back in 1993, and and Freddy's Dead, which is released back in 1991. And there's also DVD ROM content, split to screen, enhanced playback mode, the cutting room floor edited activity and there's also more but too bad that I don't have any have a PC or a computer to insert two of two discs of Freddy vs. Jason so yeah looks like I have three uh, Friday the 13th films collected yeah, which is 
Friday the 13th, part three, parts three and seven. And, and this one with a crossover movie of Freddy Krueger from New Line Cinema instead of Paramount and Viacom. Hot spots. Cutting room floor. And they also have a 17 chapters. Wait a minute. I just don't know what. New Line Cinema should have also given a credit to Paramount Pictures and Viacom for the for the character of Jason Voorhees. Yeah, since the Paramount and Viacom company decided to release, uh, has decided to release all Friday the 13th films. Oh, well. If you guys do not like the movie, that's okay. Because in my opinion, this movie is fucking badass. <laughs>